Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. As you can see, we are back with another video. So I've been trying to stay consistent for y'all. I finally got a new camera, which I mentioned a few videos ago if you're a returner. So yeah, we rolling out this content. Make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. And yeah, we're about to go ahead and get into this tutorial. So I didn't do anything special. I just started off by pushing my client's cuticle area back and that just helps expose the entire nail. And now I'm going in with my 180 sanding band and I'm just making sure to file the entire nail as well as the cuticle area. And this is just super important because it helps get rid of all of those natural oils that our nails produce. Those will prevent the acrylic from adhering to the nail properly. So you do wanna make sure that when you're doing this step, you're taking your time to remove all of the natural shine. Now you don't wanna to apply too much pressure and you wanna make sure that your drill is at a decent speed, not too high and obviously not too low and make sure that you are keeping that file moving. If you leave it in one spot for too long, use too much pressure or have the speed up too high, your client will get a burning sensation and that is because you are causing friction. So just definitely be mindful when using this always, of course. Now that we have the nails applied and to cut down to the length that she wants them, as you can see, we're doing extra long. I'm going ahead and blending the nail tip in with the natural nail, and this is just to help prevent lifting and really will help your retention. Everything that we do during the prep is super, super important. I feel like the prep is one of the most important parts, if not the most important part of the acrylic process overall. So definitely take your time and don't skip any steps. So I went ahead and dusted off all of that dust from blending those nail tips in and I'm going in with my Mia Secret Dehydrator. And this is just another layer of getting rid of those natural oils. It does exactly what it's called, dehydrator. One layer of this is enough, especially if you took your time to really blend those nail tips in and get rid of any dust. So now I'm gonna go ahead and go in with my Mia Secret Extra Bond. Another brand that I use a lot is Young Nails Protein Bond, but this is what I had today, so it works just as good. Now I applied two layers of this, but only one is required. Two is optional. I just feel like since I've done that way, I like my retention rate better. Not that it was bad before, but yeah. This is just what helps prime the nails and allow the acrylic to adhere properly. So as you can see, these are extra long. So I do apply my acrylic a little bit different. Now granted, since the pinky is smaller in diameter, this is one of the only nails when I'm doing extra long that I do a little bit differently. I place my bead closer to where the nail tip and the natural nail meet, which is called the apex, which we're gonna get into that because that is the most important part of the nail. But until then, um, I do place my first bead there and I do just like to feather it down. You wanna make sure that you are lightly feathering. You don't wanna to apply too much pressure. You don't want to be pressing the brush into the acrylic. All that's gonna do is cause product to get clogged into your brush and overall you're taking off more product than what you need to be you don't want to take off any product honestly so that's why I say feather and work lightly and I'm also as you can see taking a lot of time well actually I'm saying a lot of time but it takes not even a second to press my brush up against the sides of the nail as well as the free edge just to really make sure that I'm keeping that shape and if you're wondering why that will save you so much time when you get to filing because your shape is still really nice and neat so when you get to that point you're not really shaping you're just cleaning it up so here I am going in with my second bead and I place it right where the natural nail and the nail tip meet this again is called the apex and this is the most important part a lot of people think, especially when you're a beginner, that you have to load the nail with acrylic and you do not have to do that, y'all. This is the most important part of the nail and as long as this is taken care of, you should be good. Now, of course, you do wanna make sure that the rest of your foundation is built up, but if you apply your acrylic properly, then you should be fine. Usually with medium or short nails, you don't really have to necessarily worry. Now, when you get to the longer lengths, obviously there's more nail tip than there is natural nails. So it does have a higher chance of breaking, but again, just work your way up. I feel like that helped me starting from the free edge up into the cuticle area. And that is what really helped me not only ensure that the rest of my nail was built up properly, but that I had a good apex. So now that I have that done, I'm just gonna go ahead and go in with my cuticle bead. Now I place this right underneath the cuticle you don't want to place it right at the cuticle or on top of the cuticle and that is because as you start to feather it down it will lightly push up and it will result in 
uh, acrylic falling right where it needs to fall. If you place it at the cuticle or on the cuticle, it will cause flooding. And that's just when the acrylic goes too far past the cuticle area. If it gets on your client's skin or on the cuticle, just take a second to get your brush a little wet and wipe off the area as you can see I'm doing here. And that just ensures that there's no acrylic on your client's skin or past the cuticle. That is super important. Make sure that y'all are paying attention to that because that will cause lifting 100%. Again, I already mentioned this, but you want to make sure that the acrylic is nice and flush with your client's cuticle. No acrylic on the skin. And again, it's an easy fix. Just go ahead and wipe it off with your brush and make sure that it's completely free of all acrylic, your client's cuticle area and skin before moving on to the next nail. It's pretty much the same process. As you can see, I do like to work closer to the bottom and work my way up to the top. And there's no right or wrong way or right or wrong amount of beads that you should be using. Whatever you're, you have to do to make sure that your client is leaving with a nice foundation is what we need to do. So sometimes you can use one bead, you can use two, you can use seven or ten. It really just depends and always double check. Make sure that you're looking at your client's hands from different angles, side walls especially side views I should say side views especially because that will tell you if you need to add more acrylic and one of my biggest tips and something that I learned along the way is it's better to add than to have to take away spend the time you know filing all that acrylic off in the end obviously you don't want to not have enough acrylic but it's easier to just look and see hey do I need to add some here do I need to add some there and if so add it and if not you're good rather than just automatically slap a whole bunch of acrylic on there and then get to the end and either one send your client out with super thick nails or two now you're spending not only extra time filing this down but now you're wasting product you just spent all the time applying it and now you're going to spend all the time getting rid of it so definitely just work smarter and not harder so again as you can see i'm making sure to keep my brush pressed up against the side to just really keep that shape it will definitely help cut time in the long run so i'm going to let you all finish watching this part if you have any questions feel free to comment i always say this on all my tutorials but i am very active so i will reply back to any comments questions or concerns that y'all have and definitely um comment yeah if you want to know anything if you got any questions but again since this is kind of repetitive and with the longer nails it does take a little bit longer for each nail there's no point in me repeating myself for each and every nail it's the same process and I know I don't know about y'all but like I'm a visual learner so once I hear you explain it once or twice I'm good I just have to really see it and take it in visually
okay so we're back we're about to go ahead and get into the filing as you can see i kept everything nice and neat so i don't have to do much here and that's going to really cut down the amount of time that we spend here so of course they're longer so we got to make sure with any set but especially with them long nails that we are really mastering that shape when the nails are long if there's one flaw we're going to notice it if you're a beginner it's a little bit easier you know it's a little bit less noticeable when it's short or medium, but when it's long, you're gonna notice. So you definitely wanna make sure that we are really getting in to the nitty gritty. And y'all, look at that apex. Look how good it is. Look how built up it is. The nails have a nice slope, not too much acrylic, and they're not thin by any means. So that is the goal. So as you can see here, I'm filing the free edge. I'm just placing the file straight up against the free edge of the nail and filing straight up and down. The key here is to make sure that your clients nail and hand is straight aligned with you sometimes clients be like twisted or you be twisted or whatever and then you think you're filing straight but the straight that you are filing is how it's straight to how y'all were angled so you may want to make sure that you and your client are straightly i don't even know if that's a word <laughs> straightly aligned with each other so that way when you're filing it's truly straight as you can see i'm making sure to file the sides here again just keeping that file straight up against the nail and filing up and down and that's what's going to give you that really crispy clean shape you don't want your file to be angled you don't want it to be slanted you don't want your client's nail to be slanted make sure that it is straight and the file is straight as well wherever you file is the direction in which you're going to be taking off nail so if your file is angled you're going to be filing that nail angled you get what i'm saying so just make sure to keep it flat up against the nail same with when you're filing the free edge now this part right here is totally optional but i definitely like to do it and i've noticed that since i've started to do this i feel like my designs just apply better and overall my nails are smoother so i just take the file and i file around the entire nail except for the cuticle area as you can see i made sure to keep my thumb covering the cuticle area now I'm going to kind of explain that just a little bit. This file is super sharp. It's an 80 grit. So I'm already being cautious by making sure to pull my client's skin back, but obviously I can't pull a cuticle back. So since regardless, we have to take our e-file and file that to make it flush. You know, when we seal the cuticles, we'll get into that. But we, my point is we have to file that with the e-file. So there's no point in me doing that with the hand file especially since it is close to the cuticle which is a very delicate sensitive area i don't want to even take any chances of slicing that filing it whatever so we're just going to skip that part but the reason i like to file the rest of the nail again like i said it's like the i like how it looks in the end so i didn't used to do this and you don't have to do this because you can just when you hit up your cuticle area with your e-file you can hit the rest of the nail up so it's really optional i like to do it whatever Anyways, um, again, y'all, y'all see how I'm going back here and straightening the nails up? My client was a little crooked to me. So make sure that you're just kind of taking the time to go back and double check. Once you move on, you can still always go back and double check. There's no crime in that. And it'll ensure that your client is getting, you know, everything exactly how it needs to be. Another thing I wanted to mention, as you can see here, I am kind of angling the file to the underside of the nail, but that's just really briefly. And that is just because again, when I'm doing the acrylic, I do take my brush and press it up against the sides and the free edge. So sometimes some acrylic can get stuck under there and that's okay. But we wanna make sure that the undersides of the nails are nice and straight and clean. And this is what will help ensure that. You don't wanna have any rigidness underneath your nails. You don't wanna have any acrylic any lumps any patches any sharpness this is what will just help make sure it's nice and clean and straight any little step that you can do to add quality to your client set you want to make sure that you're doing especially if you are somebody that's charging a lot you want to they're they're going to pay for what they get so you want to make sure that you're giving them what they're paying for um i honestly you guys after five years of doing nails there's just a lot of little things that I have kind of not only taken from, hey, if I was the client, would I want this fixed or would I care about this? I have kind of took that as well as like comments from clients, et cetera, and put it all together to just really ensure a nice experience and really give like a good set. So we're gonna do the same thing here with the thumb. File the sides, file straight up against the nail, file the free edge and then file over top. So I'm gonna let y'all finish watching this and I'm gonna pick back up when we start using the e-file.
so now that we have these nice and filed I'm gonna go ahead and start with my e-file as you can see here I'm picking some acrylic that got stuck underneath the free edge of the nail this right here taking the file and filing the crescent will really really help that it's going to help get any acrylic that may have got pushed up underneath there when we were doing the application it'll help free that and then of course just bring back that nice crispy shape towards the free edge that's another small thing yet big because it's really small and it takes not even a second to do on each nail but it really just helps add to the quality of the nail so the whole point in this step is to really seal the cuticle area and make sure that the entire nail overall is even, no lumps, no bumps, make sure it's nice and smooth. So granted, yes, I did take the hand file in the previous clip and file over top of the body of the nail, but I do like to just briefly run over it with my sanding band just to ensure that it's nice and straight. And then even sometimes, although with that file, with the hand file it does like buff it very nicely sometimes every now and then regardless nobody's perfect sometimes i might have a little lump or bump you know just because this is such a, a long nail and we are using so much more acrylic than normal so i do just like to again rather be safe than sorry and just ensure that it is it is up to par but the main goal here, like I said, is to seal the cuticles. We want to make sure that the cuticle area is nice and flush. We don't want any super thick cuticle bubbly looking acrylic up there. We don't want any chips. We want everything to be nice and smooth, nice and flat, nice and flush. So the three F's. Um, and you don't have to really do too much here. You just want to make sure that you are paying attention and double checking that the cuticle area is nice and clean. And that is just going to really help prevent lifting. Obviously, as your client's nail grows out, you want it to be, like I said, flush. If it's too thick, sometimes that can just cause it, that new growth is a little bit weaker. So it can start to kind of like make that area of acrylic right underneath it kind of chip. And if it's not, um, if it's risen or if there's any acrylic that's not flat, obviously that can cause lifting because it was kind of lifted in the beginning. Anyways, you just couldn't really tell because it's a brand new set. So this is all stuff that you'll kind of learn and get used to along the way. So if it's something that you're struggling with, just continue to watch videos and do your research. Make sure you're paying attention if you are in nail school and just kind of gain your knowledge. Because when I first started, I did not know everything that I know now. Obviously, school teaches you a lot, but I'm going to be honest, you guys. I'm popular opinion. Don't nail me to the wall for this, but I feel like you learn more with your own practice. Nail school teaches you what you have to know, but practice and experience teaches you what you need to know and what should help you, what you should know, okay? Now this is going to be one of the easiest steps of the whole tutorial. We're just taking our buffer and buffing the entire nail, left to right, bottom to top, cuticle area included. And I do like to run it on the undersides of the nail just to ensure that everything is nice and smooth and clean, ready to go for the design. Now I don't film this next step, but I do, after dusting, apply cuticle area to the entire cuticle as well as on the underside of the nail the skin underneath the nail just to help loosen up that dust that's kind of been sitting there for a while and then i have my client wash her hands that way when she comes back she is free of everything no dust no grime everything is nice and clean and ready to go so we're going to go ahead and get into the design now there's french tip on every single finger it's just a different color so for this one we're just going to be doing um a darker pink the colors we're doing here is pink well I guess I should be more specific dark pink light pink white and like some rhinestones but we'll get to that so honestly y'all low-key I feel like the easiest nails to do French tip on is the long nails because I just feel like you have so much more space to work with um, I do my French tips the same on every set except for when I'm doing shorties and of course if my client has a request to have a different look for her French tip but overall it's usually the same process I like to start by outlining the size of the nails to kind of let me know and gauge where I want to start my French at once I have the sides done 
I do like to just start on one side and bring down the loop, getting kind of like mapping out where I want the French to be. And then I go ahead and connect the other side. Now, obviously, you know, sometimes you can get it perfectly Frenched, I guess, right on the first try. But usually, regardless, um, once you connect it, you still do have to go back in and just clean it up a little bit, which you'll see me do here, which is no problem. You'd rather it be clean than messy and valid than rushed, I guess. So just definitely take your time. And French tip is definitely kind of intimidating. I did not start um, liking French tip until like about a year ago, maybe even two. And mind y'all, like I said, I've been doing nails for, it'll be five years. So definitely, um, just take your time. Y'all give yourself grace, practice, practice, practice. Cause I would not know how to do none of the stuff I know how to do without practice. Like I said, nail school kind of just teaches you what you have to know, you know, the sanitary per um, parts of it and health aspects, whatever. And yeah, of course they teach you a little bit of design, but they don't, I just, that's my opinion. At least where I went, I feel like they don't teach you the mastering of things so just practice that is my biggest biggest tip so like I said every nail on here is French tip so I'm going to be doing literally the same exact steps and then as you see I am making sure to wipe the undersides of the nails because we are using gel which is thick and so sometimes it can kind of start to drip off the sides so we just want to do that and regain the shape I'm gonna let you guys finish watching this clip like I said it is the same step on every nail as far as the French tip so if you have any questions again comment down below and let me know and I'm gonna pick back up in the next part
so we just let that cure for 60 seconds and we're gonna go ahead and get into the blooming gel design so I want to throw a little tip out there my blooming gel was running low y'all so big fun fact if you are out of blooming gel but still want to do the design use a base coat I only have Beatles base coat but I've used it multiple times and it works literally just fine I'm sure any base coat will work but low-key y'all I'm gonna let y'all know a secret I actually like the base coat better than the blooming gel don't kill me I feel like the blooming gel works a little too fast and I noticed that the longer it sits like as soon as you start to apply it it starts to like give this bubbling look I don't like that so the base coat it's just nice and smooth until you dry it I really like that and I feel like it works a little bit slower so you don't have to rush um, so now that we have that blooming gel applied though you want to do a thin layer you just want to start where the French is and work your way down the center and just create nice even lines now this might look harder than what you think but it's really just staying steady and taking your time so once you have the middle done you're going to do the same thing on the sides just with shorter lines obviously and just make sure that you're going from top to bottom of course like I said you do kind of want to work a little bit quicker at least when you're using blooming gel I don't know if it's just me but I feel like this stuff blooms quick and that's why you want to do a thinner layer of it obviously covering um, the entire nail but too much I feel like is what really makes that bloom quick and then it just bobs together and it's not fun so and that was actually um, the only blooming gel well blooming design we're gonna do with that color so we're gonna do it again on the thumb but we'll get to that so this finger is actually super simple we're just taking that same pink and literally outlining the French so you do want to work with a little less polish because you want the line to be nice and precise nice and clean and I feel like when there's too much polish on your nail sometimes that can make the line super thick and uneven and just a little bit harder to work with so I just say make sure you're working with minimal polish when doing something where you want it to be super precise and the brush you use matters too. Low key y'all, I actually just reminded myself I need to order me some new brushes because I have been using the hell out of these and it's thin, it's bald. My brush is very bald. It's to the point, it don't matter how much polish I pick up low key, it ain't enough. So I just reminded myself, thank you for that. But yeah, as you can see, this is super simple. You just wanna outline the sides and then when you are doing the bottom, like the free edge of the nail, just kind of take your time because it seems like it's as simple as just going across. But I don't know if it's just me. Sometimes when I do this, I get intimidated and I start to get the trip in, my hand be wobbling and then the line is not straight. Why? I don't know. I think I think about it too much. It's one of the things that you just think too hard on it when it's just a simple swipe, but super simple. And make sure you have the lines connected. Um, if you've seen that was going back like on the corners of the nails. I don't know what was going on y'all, but I had to redo this a few times on the other hand because I just was like not connecting the lines. And then when I would go back to connect them, I don't know what was happening. So <laughs> just kind of be mindful that's why you don't gotta go back and blob the polish on like I did and then hate it and then redo it and we're gonna do another blooming design here but again it's with white polish so same steps as before with the middle finger Okay, so we did the same steps there and now we're going to go ahead and do the bling nail. So this is super simple. I like to outline anytime I'm doing a bling French tip, a whole bling finger, unless we are specifically purposely going for a different base color. I always use any silver gel or whatever, you know, color. If it's gold, I use gold, etc. But in this case, it's silver. So I'm just using some gel polish and I always like to 
put a base of where we're going to be putting the rhinestones. One, it helps me create a map so I know exactly where to place them and make it nice and precise. But two, it just kind of adds underneath. It gives it a better effect and a better look overall, which is why I did that. And so I went ahead and top coated that. And I think I top coated all of them actually, but I definitely top coated these ones. And I'm using my McCart rhinestone glue. This is a lifesaver, y'all. I love it so much. I probably will never use another rhinestone glue, but um, it is very thick. So just be mindful. I like to work little by little. Um, and I usually only do one finger at a time unless it's like really small amounts of bling. But I do that because like I said, since it is thick, the bling does slide sometimes and yeah it just kind of gets annoying so make sure that when you're using this um you are before you cure it make sure that you are realigning the stones if needed make sure that they are exactly where you want them to be and then hurry up and cure when it cures it's going to dry asap and them stones are going to be stuck so that's why i say make sure that everything is right in place nothing has moved or slid off everything is exactly where you want it to be and then immediately put it under the light because it can slide within a few seconds but once it goes under the light it's dry obviously it's going to be a hassle to have to pop some off reapply them whatever so it's better to just make sure that where you want them but yeah so i'm just kind of like applying random size stones kind of sort of just going for the you know look that she showed me on her inspo and added a few flowers because that's um, what was on the inspo as well. And obviously when working up the sides, you want to work with smaller stones just to give it more of a uniform, clean look. Again, here I am reapplying. Well, not reapplying them, but I was just making sure that they were where I wanted them to be and let it cure. So I usually just, there's no specific time. I let it go under the dryer and usually I'm bouncing back and forth between hands and then when I'm ready for that hand again I have her pull it back out so there's no specific time but yeah so I do the same thing here we added some cherries on this one she wanted a few little cherries I got this whole set from an inspo which is why I'm using specific stones and whatnot so yeah that is pretty much the rest of the tutorial the rest I just top coat I might add some bling on other ones but I don't think I do but yeah, y'all, it's pretty simple. Um, but I just wanted to show y'all. Like I said, I'm really pushing out this content for y'all. So any and everything that I can try to show y'all is going to be on this channel. And I do have a really exciting video coming up. It's not going to be posted by the time y'all see this, but it will be coming within the next day or two. So definitely stay tuned. I'm super excited about it. Um, yeah. Anyways, y'all, again, comment like and subscribe we are so close to a thousand subscribers and then i'm going to be doing a live giveaway and i am about to start doing more content for y'all that is outside of nail videos specifically i'm going to start doing nail tech vlogs day in my lives and just some other really fun stuff that i have in store so if that's something that you'd want to see definitely comment down below give me some ideas talk to me um you can reach out to me on my social medias as well i reply i'm not a mean girl i'm a girl's girl guys girl whatever i'm just a girl i'm just a girl that loves everyone so yeah thanks for supporting i hope you made it to the end of the video and yeah y'all i'm really excited for this giveaway i think we're like a few subscribers away so if you are watching this and you're new or you haven't subscribed subscribe and click the bell because you can have a chance to win a whole big old nail kit and it's gonna be legit i'm not about to play y'all i'm not about to give y'all no bs I'm about to really hook the winner up. I think I might do two winners too, by the way. I'm gonna get y'all some charms, some good beginner products, everything, maybe even a drill and a lamp. I don't know y'all. So definitely subscribe and click the bell, but this is the outcome. Look how cute. I love them. I think the bling adds just enough bling, but keeps it still simple and subtle, you know? And I love pink. Obviously it kind of looks like there's an effect just because of the way my lighting is, but if you want to see exactly how they turned out, I mean, this is pretty close and accurate, but y'all know how to light and be sometimes. Just hating, but you can go follow my Instagram. My nail Instagram is below and you can see all of my sets and all of my behind the scenes content. So yeah, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Make sure to like, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.